What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given here with your afternoon snap and today we are taking a look at Valley Girl combo in Marvel Snap. This is the newest location, Valley of the Hand. After turn five, your destroyed cards revive here. Honestly, this is kind of a weird location to build around. I think that the best way to build around it is probably using Shuri and Lady Deathstrike, the newest release into the game. But short of that, it's kind of hard to make work because you have to find cards that you want to destroy, but then also want to revive. So cards that you don't really want to destroy. And a lot of cards like that that you want to destroy and then revive already revive themselves, like Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Deadpool, which actually means they don't work with Valley of the Hand. So that makes this location a little bit awkward to use. And what I came up with was Galactus. Galactus and Destroyer, those are my Valley Girls. And this is basically just a Galactus deck. The thing about Galactus now, post rework, is you want priority on your Galactus turn, which means you want to play a bunch of cards in the early game that actually contribute power to your board. And you'll need that in order to flip over and activate Galactus and destroy those other two locations. So the idea that I got in my head is, what if I destroy some cards early on, like Sunspot and Misty Knight that can continue to add power to my location after they are reanimated with Valley of the Hand, and then potentially use that to junk my opponent up so that way they don't get to play on the final turn of the game. So that's the idea. That is the Valley Girl combo. I also want to say that this deck is totally just for fun. I'm not recommending it unless, of course, you want to have some fun because I do think that this deck is really silly. Uh, it's definitely not that great, though. And there's probably a lot of things that you could change or sub in and out. You could play more than one high evolutionary card. Maybe you even mess around with Shocker because the curve on in this deck is kind of expensive. That's a card that I've been looking to try in some high Evo lists uh, with Galactus. Just can't really find that much space. Nebula also really good. And you could play like Viper plus the Hood. That could be an interesting way to get priority. And then um, you, you do have to worry about potentially like if you're Valley of the Hand cards flip over first, then you're giving your opponent Galactus potentially with Viper. So that could be a really weird thing to watch out for and could mean that you lose because of it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how Valley of the Hand works, if the order is random or what happens. And then the other thing that could be a little bit weird, if you like give your opponent Green Goblin or Hobgoblin, in a location that isn't Valley of the Hand, and then you revive those cards in Valley of the Hand, they're gonna on reveal again and potentially come back to you if your opponent is reviving first. So there's some definitely some weird interactions that could come up, uh, but ultimately it's pretty fun. So let me know if you do try it, what you think. Let's take a look at it in action. I also put out a YouTube short for this game where I did a little bit of a Valley Girl accent. I tried at least, uh, but this game is probably the best that this deck has ever worked. The locations are really, really good for me and my opponent plays the hood on turn one into Valley of the Hand, which means I have priority and I've got additional power in the location that I already want to drop Galactus into. And then Cloning Vats is actually a really great location to play Sunspot into, because now I'll have multiple Sunspots and we can potentially reanimate both of them. And then that third location is Project Pegasus. If you haven't already seen the YouTube short, you weren't spoiled on that, but uh, yeah, just an absolutely incredible moment. I have priority now on turn three. I get to drop Galactus and I'll also get to play Titania here. And I'll talk about that for a second. So Galactus is going to destroy only currently the demon for my opponent. And my other uh, my opponent's other cards are going to be face down. And I'm not totally confident that Valley of the Hand will revive 
face down cards. I got into a little bit of a valley girl accent there. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm giving my opponent Titania, so that way that's one more card that my opponent will have to revive into Valley of the Hand. That was the idea here. There we see Galactus's hand coming down on the valley. That's going to blow up the demon Titania and uh, assumedly another demon for my opponent, and then Carnage is going to eat up the hood. So my opponent isn't down by that much in the valley. Uh, though the, the fact that we have an additional sunspot is going to be absolutely great. I think about potentially playing another Titania, uh, but I'm going to get back Misty Knight and a second sunspot. Uh, so that's, or I could potentially get back two more sunspots next turn. I forgot we played a second sunspot into the cloning vat. So I'm not concerned for more power there. And it works out great for me not playing on turn five because my opponent plays a Gamora on that turn, which misses. Typically, you would think that a Gamora into a Galactus location would always hit, but I don't play anything on turn five. And then the valley fills up with Demon and the Hood for my opponent, and I get Sunspot and Misty Knight. And that was even without a turn six. I'm gonna have 12 more power at that location. So that will wind up being an easy victory. This game was definitely not an easy victory. It was like the opposite. It was a very, very weird game, but it all kind of worked out. I play Sunspot into Atlantis on turn one, thinking that I want to keep Valley of the Hand open, and Atlantis could give me a good way to play for priority, but that second location is Lake Hellas, which means I could have gotten a lot more power out of this Sunspot. It's a little bit unfortunate. My opponent's going to play Zabu, and I actually do have priority but no Project Pegasus or Valley of the Hand this game. Our third location is gonna be Sinister London, which is typically not really a great location for Galactus, so I just abandon that plan, play out Misty Knight, and then my opponent plays an Iron Lad. That's gonna be for Shang-Chi into Sinister London. On turn four, I draw the Rock. Not really a great draw. I do actually consider playing it here, so high Evo is eight power. Uh, four in Sinister London, then in four wear copies. Rock into Lake Hellas is two power there, plus three power into Sunspot, plus two more power from each Misty Knight. So it's actually close to just play the Rock there. Kind of surprisingly, uh, my opponent plays Captain Marvel into Sinister London. And now this game is going absolutely horribly. My opponent has priority. I can't Galactus until... My opponent plays Killmonger, which is seemingly a pretty good play. It's going to destroy a lot of the power that I've worked up for this game, but because they don't play it into Sinister London, now I have priority and I have Atlantis clear. And because it's Atlantis, it's actually a 12 power Galactus. So even if I didn't have priority, I might be able to battle, but this is a turn six Galactus. And of course my opponent is going to play to Sinister London on the final turn. So they don't get to contribute any power into Atlantis. And we even get to add a little bit more power here with Wolverine. That'll be seven plus seven, slightly bigger than the 12 power Galactus, uh, but really sweet overall. And definitely a fun one with a surprising Galactus finish. This game, I am just including to reiterate a point that I have made before. And that is that I don't think you should be able to storm the featured location or Magic It or Scarlet Witch or Rhino or Reality Stone, any of those things. Just leave it alone. Let people have their fun. I think it's a role they should add to the game. But in this one, my opponent plays Storm into Valley of the Hand. So unfortunately, that location is flooded. We aren't going to be able to do anything super crazy this game. But we do still have Ramp while my opponent is playing into the flooded location here. So we get to have more energy this turn and we can probably beat them out in that location. So I'm gonna go for Hobgoblin in the flooded location and see if we can maybe win that. And then we get to play a turn five destroyer to battle for Crimson Cosmos. My opponent might not even be able to play to Crimson Cosmos because they might be playing a Silver Surfer list by the looks of it. I've played all three of these cards in a Silver Surfer deck myself in the past, and Juggernaut also kind of points me in that direction and also means that I've won the Flooded location. So I'm going to snap here on uh, turn five, and with that, my opponent is going to retreat. 
and then do a little bit of emote spamming. These are the people you're encouraging by letting them storm the featured location. Don't let them do it. We're gonna take a look at one final Valley of the Hand game, one final Valley Girl combo with a really good setup. We've got the turn three Electro into turn four Hobgoblin, turn five Galactus, and those are both going into Valley of the Hand. Don't have another option for them because of Shadowland. That is one good thing about Valley of the Hand, by the way. It's just an open location that you can always play Galactus to, uh, which is part of the reason that I think Galactus jumped out in my mind today. On turn four, my opponent has Jubilee into Doctor Doom for a ton of power, and they actually have priority going into turn five, which is a little bit spooky, but I think they're probably a bot, so I'm not gonna be too afraid of that snap there. I'm just gonna drop Galactus, hope they don't play anything into Valley of the Hand this turn. They actually play nothing, so Galactus is going to activate, and now I just have to hope that we still win this game, I guess it? No, I think we win this game every time because my opponent doesn't have anything that can outpower Galactus because of that Hobgoblin. Uh, we roll, you know, reasonably well here. We don't find the Ninja. We find Titania and Misty Knight, and my opponent actually gets the Ninja. So we are up 16 to negative 2 going into that final turn. That's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no luck's given. Peace.